Season 2 of The X-Files was definitely an improvement over the first. They seem to finally figure out where they wanted to take the show and the feeling out process of the first season is finally over. Now this doesn't mean they knocked every episode out of the park, but when you have 25 episodes to create for a single season, there's bound to be some weaker ones. And since we've just completed season 2, I figured I would rank each and every episode just like I did for the first season, from worst to best. Now this is just my opinion and it's definitely not carved in stone, especially when you consider just how many really good episodes there are. I'm also not an authority on the subject, so don't take it to heart if your favorite isn't number one. I know this is the internet, but god do people take things so personally. Anyways, with that out of the way, this is season 2 ranked from worst to best. Excelsis Day is definitely one of the weaker episodes in Season 2, if not the weakest. Now I don't hate the episode, but it's really all over the place. It's like they didn't know what they wanted the story to be. The episode brings the agents to an old folks home, where an orderly was assaulted, and I have to say assaulted, because the other word is a no-no on YouTube, by what she claimed to be a ghost. Well, she says it was one of her residents who did it, but when you see the old man, you realize there's no way this old fragile man is assaulting anyone. What you end up getting is an episode about elderly folks being cured of their ailments from some magical mushrooms that also seem to open up a gateway of sorts so the dead residents can come back and get revenge on the people that were supposed to be caring for them, but instead were treating them like crap. One of the weirdest parts of the episode is how the woman's assault claims are really just glossed over by everyone except for Scully, despite having injuries that would coincide with an attack like that. The ending also feels really rushed when they save the day by cutting off some old man's mushroom overdose, which just magically sends all the ghosts packing, I guess. Overall, the episode isn't great, but it does make me laugh every time Mulder checks out the old guy's junk. So there's that, I guess. And it don't work much better either. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Are you Fearful Symmetry tries to tell a message, but within the confines of an X-Files episode, and it just really doesn't work. The agents are brought to a zoo where one of their prized elephants is found dead after it somehow escaped, caused a ton of damage to the town, oh and did I mention it was invisible? Yeah, the animals at this zoo all seem to disappear from their cages and then somehow reappear, except when they return, they're invisible for a short period of time. So while zoo officials argue with an animal rights group over what's happening to the animals, Mulder thinks it's aliens, which of course it is. The animals are being taken, impregnated, and then returned as part of some weird alien experiment or conservation effort, I guess. Maybe it's a Noah's Ark thing where the aliens know we're killing off all these species, so one by one they take them and harvest their young so they can keep the species from going extinct? I have no idea, but the idea just doesn't really work. I understand the message and that's fine, but the way it's executed and combined with alien abduction is just weird. Then you throw in a silly sign language gorilla reminiscent of Amy from Congo and the whole thing just goes off the rails. Firewalker is just a duller version of the episode Ice from Season 1, which itself is basically just a knockoff of John Carpenter's The Thing. Instead of a research facility in the Arctic, you have one at an active volcano. Instead of a parasitic alien life form that drives people to kill, you have some sort of fungal life form that grows inside its host until it bursts out like the chest burster from Alien. The same themes of paranoia and distrust are all present as well, and there really isn't a lot to say about this episode. The cast all do a fine job with what they're given, it's just that we've all kind of seen it before. It does start off somewhat interesting in the beginning when you see the dead body and shadowy figure inside the volcano, but once you realize it's just one of the scientists, it's kind of a letdown. Now I'm not saying I was expecting some lava monster to come out and attack people, but they could have done something a little different than what is really just a tired retread. Dewcom has an interesting premise, but has too many holes in it to really make it a solid episode. Mulder and Scully head to Norway where survivors from a ship seem to have aged 50 years overnight. When the agents find the ship the men escaped from, it becomes pretty clear that the ship is rapidly aging. What they end up discovering is the water in the ship is somehow aging everything at a really rapid rate, except for the water in the sewage system which somehow was unaffected. This was all caused by some bright light seen in the ocean, which we can only assume to be alien. Of course Mulder and Scully start to age quickly, and the makeup job, well, uh, it doesn't look that great. The two agents nearly die but are found just in the nick of time and because of Scully's notes are saved. A question I always bring up is why did this bright light only affect the water inside the ship and not even all of the water inside the ship? Why did it not affect the water surrounding the ship? 
There should have been tons of dead sea life everywhere, but there wasn't any. The premise is decent, but it needed a bit more time to cook in the writer's room. 3 is another mediocre episode. I don't hate it, but it's weird seeing Mulder just randomly hook up with some vampire lady right after Scully goes missing. Obviously the two aren't in a relationship and Mulder can do what he wants, but it feels like a weird thing for him to do while he's searching for and worried about his partner. So Mulder tracks down some supposed vampires and ends up catching one, who actually turns out to be a vampire when he's burnt in the sun. This also comes as a shock to him later on, as even he didn't realize he was a vampire. I mean, he claimed he was one, but didn't actually know it until he fried. Mulder then meets a vampire lady who's being stalked by the other three vampires, as she used to be in a relationship with one of them. And when she pulls out a syringe for a little blood swap, Mulder has the very rational fear of AIDS, but not so rational that he can't then sleep with her just a few scenes later. 3 was basically just a slapdash effort while Jillian was having her baby, and it really feels like it. Mulder almost feels out of character with some of the things he does. Maybe this is his way of grieving or dealing with depression, I don't know, but it's odd behavior. The episode is okay, but gets overshadowed by a much better vampire episode later on in the series. From vampires sucking blood to a man that just straight up fears it, blood exposes people to their greatest fears, pushing ordinary people to the point of murder. What's causing this fear is really unknown, but any electronics they come in contact with seem to prey on whatever it is they fear most. For one man it's claustrophobia, and another woman it's assault, but for our main character it's blood. From paper cuts to blood drives, and even bloody noses, he just can't seem to take it. It also doesn't help that some unforeseen power is pushing him to the point of insanity and murder. The whole episode culminates when the man buys a rifle and starts firing upon a college blood drive from the clock tower, only for Mulder to stop him in time before he can do any more harm. I've always questioned why the man would be driven to murder if he hates blood so much. If he shoots or stabs someone, he's only going to make more blood, so wouldn't that just drive him even crazier? But the thing is, we never do find out what caused all of this or why. Was it an experiment by the Syndicate, or was it something else entirely? I'm not saying you always need answers 100% of the time, but it would have been nice to know a little bit of what just happened. Blood overall though is a decent enough episode. Red Museum is a mix of a bunch of different ideas that on their own are interesting, but thrown together is a bit of a mess. First you have a PDF file that secretly records children in their bathroom and kidnaps them because he hates what they've become. Second, you have a vegan religious group that keeps clashing with the folks in a small town known for its meat processing. And then you have some mythology stuff with Deep Throat's killer and the children being injected with purity control by their doctor. Any one of these things could have been used as the basis for its own episode, but instead we're all thrown together in some primordial soup that doesn't really come together. The episode is so jumbled that most people forget that this is a mythology episode and not a monster of the week. It really isn't until the last act where you find out what's really going on, and by then you just don't really care. One of the biggest sins with the episode is how quickly they take care of Deep Throat's killer. He killed such a prominent character like Deep Throat and then he's just quickly tossed aside. It wasn't even Mulder or Scully who shoots him either, but instead the sheriff of the town whose son was killed by him. They really could have built the character up more and made something interesting out of it. Instead they just briefly bring him in so Scully can have a flashback and then quickly shoot him in the end. The episode overall isn't terrible, it just tries to do too much and needed a little bit more focus. F. Emasculata brings the agents to a prison where a couple inmates have escaped. Scully stays behind because the real story is there. What she uncovers is a parasite that causes flu-like symptoms and postules that eventually rupture and lead to death. All of this occurred because of a pharmaceutical company that wanted to test what one of their researchers found in the forest for medicinal purposes or who knows what else. More than likely, they just wanted to see how it would work as a bioweapon. F. Emasculata then devolves into an episode about disinformation and lies being fed to the public about the seriousness of what's going on as the fugitives may both be infected. I wouldn't even call this episode an X-File honestly, it just feels like something that actually goes on today. A pharmaceutical company playing with a highly contagious pathogen, then having the government cover the whole thing up doesn't feel like much of a stretch if you're asking me. The effects work here is really well done throughout and pretty damn disgusting. I don't recommend eating while you watch this one because it can get kinda nasty, especially when the postules burst and pus goes flying into people's open mouths. 
Also, Scully and the scientist she works alongside with do a lot of stupid things that really should have gotten both of them infected. The sudden shift from the episode being about a pathogen to misinformation is kind of jarring as well. It kind of just comes out of nowhere and I think hampers the episode as a whole. Still worth watching, just not as good as it could have been. The Kalosari is basically the exorcist and the omen. You've got a little boy that right off the bat, you know something weird is going on inside his head. I mean, his little baby brother gets hit by a train and he barely even flinches. Mulder and Scully of course are brought in because it looks like some unforeseen force led the little boy onto the tracks. There are some dark forces swirling around the family and the grandmother and her cohorts do their best to confront it, but it seems whoever gets too close to the boy ends up murdered in the end. It's then revealed that the boy had a twin brother who was stillborn, and because the grandmother wasn't allowed to detach the two spirits from one another, this allowed what can only be described as a demon or even the devil itself attach itself to the young boy. The Kalusari is a fun little horror outing, it's not perfect, and really does feel like a ripoff of The Exorcist, but it's fun enough. It even has the obligatory exorcism scene that a story like this must have. One of the things I wish that they had explored further is when one of the Kalosari tells Mulder that the demon now knows him. They could have done a sequel episode where he's once again confronted by it, but if they did, they'd probably just be retreading old ground. If you're looking for something a little more on the horror side, then this is a good go-to episode. Aubrey is a really decent episode with an interesting premise. You have a woman named BJ, who starts having visions of murders, which leads her to uncovering the bodies of two murdered FBI agents, or what's left of them anyways. The fact the bodies were placed there some 40 years prior, and in the manner in which she found them, is what brings in Mulder and Scully. A new crop of murders begin popping up, and they seem to have the same MO as the murders from the 1950s, with brother slashed across the chest of the men, and sister across the chests of the women. They begin to suspect an old serial killer to be the culprit, but he could barely walk, never mind kill anyone. What they uncover is an old victim of his who survived, had his child, gave it up for adoption, and then that child would grow up to be BJ's father. Things get even weirder when BJ basically turns into the old man because somehow his memories have been genetically implanted in her, causing her to commit the recent rash of murders without her even knowing. And while all this is going on, she's pregnant with her co-worker's child who she's having an affair with. There's quite a bit going on in this one, and it can get a little confusing, but I like the overall story, and Mulder's infantile sense of humor lines right up with mine. Yes, and also I've always been intrigued by women named BJ. Softlight introduces us to a man with a killer shadow. Yes, you heard that right, a killer shadow. After accidentally getting stuck inside a particle accelerator when it was switched on, Dr. Chester Banton's shadow has all of a sudden turned into a little black hole which sucks anyone into it, breaking them down to their atoms. A really cool idea that doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you really think about how it would work, but you have to ignore the finer details and just go with the premise. Banton isn't malicious and even hangs out inside a train station so the light will hopefully dissipate his shadow. But he starts to become paranoid because he believes those within the government are after him. Which proves to be true when X and some of his men try to take him. The episode is propped up by the excellent performance by Tony Shalhoub. You really feel bad for the guy because he has this curse that he clearly doesn't want and now he's become a wanted man. He never intends to hurt anyone but how do you explain to someone, look my shadow is a black hole and if you step in it you're gonna die. It's even worse when at the end of the episode, X finally does capture him and it looks like he's going to spend the remainder of his life locked up and experimented on. Soft Light is a good episode, falling somewhere in the middle, but hell, is that ending rather bleak. Our town may turn you off of fried chicken for a little bit. Or maybe just until we're done talking about it. Mulder and Scully arrive at the old Chaco Chicken after some bizarre behavior from the employees. Somehow, two people in this small town that worked at Chaco Chicken have both come down with the same disease similar to mad cow disease. Seeing as how difficult this disease is to spread, the only real way to get it is by eating the flesh or brain of something that is infected with it. So it's almost impossible that two people could both have the same disease, unless... That's right, the people of Dudley, Arkansas are cannibals and have been eating human flesh for decades as a way to stay young. Except they made the mistake of eating a man who suffered from the disease, thus all of them have become infected. What starts as an investigation into Foxfire changes immediately once the agents uncover the skeletal remains of at least nine people from the local river. 
Our Town is a good creepy episode and can be kind of a stomach churning one when you think about just what the people have been doing. It also gets a bit tense when Scully gets caught up in everything and nearly has her own head cleaved off. Sleepless is kind of a tragic episode. You have a Vietnam vet who was part of a program to make it so the soldiers wouldn't have the need for sleep anymore. This would make them more efficient killers because they'd never need to rest. But it only seemed to make things worse. The men became more aggressive and did unspeakable things to the Vietnamese people. And because of that, one of them, a man named Preacher, is trying to atone for his sins by systematically killing all of those involved through some kind of dreamlike state. He has a strange power to make people see what he wants them to see, and in turn they believe so fiercely that it can actually kill them. His first victim dies by fire, and despite having no burn marks on the outside, his insides were completely cooked. Another man is shot dead by the Vietnamese people that he took the lives of, only for there to be no bullet holes, except for his insides which were shredded as if there were. Preacher himself also just wanting to sleep, tricks Krychek into thinking he has a gun when all he had was a bible. The episode touches on the atrocities committed during the Vietnam War, PTSD, and just the evil that humans can inflict on one another. Sleepless is a great episode and is all brought together by the fantastic performance from the criminally underrated Tony Todd, who is definitely the standout of the episode. Fresh Bones is an interesting take on the voodoo zombie. You've got some mysterious deaths surrounding a Haitian refugee camp and a corrupt colonel covering up the abuse he's been inflicting on the people. It's not until the military informs the widow that they won't be looking any further into her husband's death that she calls in Mulder and Scully. Her husband isn't gone for long, however, when he randomly pops back up after killing his best friend. The rest of the episode is filled with grave robbing, body snatching, and voodoo rituals. There's some fun camera trickery when various characters come under voodoo spells, and one of the best special effects they've had in the series so far when a grown man comes out of Scully's hand. It's one of the most creative and trippy things you'll ever see in the show. The entire episode also has a real creepy atmosphere, especially at the end when Mulder confronts the warden in a spooky candlelit graveyard. I honestly think this episode is a little underrated and flies under many people's radars, but if you're in the mood for something a little on the spookier side, then you can't go wrong with this one. Season 2 starts off with a bang with Little Green Men. After the X-Files has been closed at the end of Season 1, Mulder and Scully have been split up and reassigned. Scully is back teaching at the academy, and Mulder is stuck listening to hours and hours of wiretapping. It's not until a senator informs Mulder that a survey station in Puerto Rico may have made contact with alien life. Of course Mulder heads there and eventually comes face to face with what is most likely an alien being. This episode gives us more insight into what Mulder is fighting for when we are actually shown what happened to his sister on that fateful night. On top of that, this is also the first episode to actually show an alien. Up until this point, everything has just been bright flashes or lights in the sky, but here we actually get to see one of them. Overall, Little Green Men is a really good episode that helps Mulder re-establish his faith in searching for the truth after having it all taken away from him in the season 1 finale. Oh, and we can't forget classic Jorge. No. Jorge, don't touch that red butt. No ho on the rojo. Colony is a very important episode when you're talking about the legacy of the X-Files. For one, we're introduced to the alien bounty hunter, who will become a big part of the story moving forward. Also, Mulder's sister makes a shocking return, which could mean the end of Mulder's search for the truth. After the bounty hunter's ship crash lands, he begins killing human alien clones, which are seen as a dilution of his species. After identical doctors with no apparent connection begin to go missing, Mulder and Scully are called on the scene to investigate. They meet a CIA operative who tells them the doctors are clones from a Soviet program, but unbeknownst to the agents, the CIA operative is actually the bounty hunter. Mulder eventually gets a call from his father, who tells him he has something important to show him, and that's where Mulder is reunited with his sister, who tells him all about her abduction and what the alien bounty hunter is after. The episode ends with the alien bounty hunter disguised as Mulder entering Scully's motel room and the audience wondering what will happen next. Samantha's return, especially so early on, was really unexpected at the time. Even though we will find out more in the next episode, you really didn't know where the show would be headed after this. A great first parter that sets up an even better second part. Endgame continues where Colony left off. Scully realizing that it's not Mulder that came in her room is assaulted by the bounty hunter who wants to know the location of Mulder's sister. Mulder is then given an impossible choice, to give up his sister for Scully's safe return. 
During the trade-off, it becomes botched, and the bounty hunter and Mulder's sister both go over the side of the bridge, and the following morning, her body is recovered from the water. Although something seems off because her body begins to melt. Mulder heads to a clinic where he finds clones of his sister, who tell him they can take him to the real Samantha, they just need his protection from the bounty hunter. Mulder fails and gets knocked out, and the rest of the clones are quickly killed. It all ends with Mulder being rushed to a field hospital after a run-in with the bounty hunter and exposure to his toxic blood. Endgame is a great conclusion. We get more answers, but at the same time, more questions. Brian Thompson is a really great addition to the series as the bounty hunter, and Samantha just being a clone? Well, that leads to more wonder about what really happened to her. An overall great episode, and well worth your time. Dehan de Verletzt is one of my personal favorite Monster of the Week episodes. After some stupid kids try and evoke Satan, and a group of Satanists only half-assed their devotion, the Dark Lord himself, or herself, takes things into its own hands and decides to get revenge on anyone who makes a mockery of the devil. Mulder and Scully are called in shortly after a teenager is found with his eyes missing and heart ripped from his chest. What starts off kind of silly with frogs raining from the sky, and Satanists that are more worried about F-words being in a school play, quickly flips when a young girl talks about really disturbing abuse she experienced from her father, and then proceeds to do an act of self-harming. While all of this is going on, you have a mysterious new substitute teacher with no background, who replaced a teacher who somehow got a rare flesh-eating disease. The entire episode just has a really creepy atmosphere, and is peak X-Files. There are some truly gross scenes, especially when it comes to the pig dissection, and it's interesting that the devil, if that's what it is, never really goes after anyone that doesn't deserve it. It went after the kids that decided to mess around with rituals, and the parents that were a little too relaxed in their devotion. All in all, Die Hand Die Verletzt is a really great episode, which is why I've got it in my top 10. Season 2 really ends on a great cliffhanger with the episode Anasazi. After a hacker downloads sensitive files from the Defense Department's website, they're handed off to a weary Mulder who's been experiencing lots of headaches and just hasn't been himself. What he finds are the government's files on alien life, except it's all been encrypted in Navajo. So while Scully gets the tape translated, Mulder jeopardizes his job and Scully's when he gets into a fistfight with Skinner. Later it's revealed that Mulder's father is involved with what's on the tape and is killed before he can tell his son. Mulder recovers in a motel room with Scully and a Navajo man named Albert, where she tells him he's been drugged, and her name also appears within that tape. Mulder's then brought to a train car out in the desert, which is filled with the bodies of aliens. Before he can go any further though, Cigarette Smoking Man arrives and they burn the train car. Inasazi is a really great episode. You think Mulder's just gone off the deep end, but find out that he's being drugged with hallucinogens, which has been causing his odd behavior. Albert is a great character that will be utilized a bit more in the future, but he comes off almost like a grandfather figure for Mulder. There's quite a bit going on with this one, and it continues to build upon the mythology in a very positive way, which is why it's at number 7. Irresistible brings us one of the creepiest and often overlooked antagonists, Donnie Faster. Unlike someone like Toombs who kills because he needs to feed, Donnie Faster kills because he has a disgusting fetish with the dead. In the beginning of the episode, he gets fired from his job at a funeral home when he's caught cutting the hair from a recently deceased young girl. Things get even weirder when Mulder and Scully are brought in as there have been a bunch of grave robbings with hair and fingernails taken as trophies. Donnie's disturbing fascination only gets worse when he takes a prostitute home and proceeds to kill her and then remove her fingers to fill his sick desires. Later, Donnie is arrested for getting aggressive with a classmate and there he sets his sights on Scully. After driving her off the road, he brings her back to his mother's abandoned home, where he plans on doing to her what he's done to the others. Luckily, Mulder and the police arrive before anything can happen, but right before that, Scully sees Donnie's true face when he transforms into a demon. Irresistible is a really good Monster of the Week episode. Donnie is such a creepy character, and even though technically not supernatural, well, until he was retconned in Season 7, he's still a monster, just a more human version. This is easily one of the better Monster of the Week episodes, and is why I have it so high on my list. Now who says just because you're watching a show about monsters and alien abduction that you can't have a little fun? Humbug brings a much more humorous touch to the X-Files, unlike anything else that we've seen in the past. The agents are called to a community of sideshow performers after one of their own is killed by something while out swimming in his pool. While they investigate, they meet a whole host of different characters, and this is a big reason why I love this episode so much. 
The characters are all very distinct and wacky in their own way. Some just do crazy stunts like Dr. Blockhead, while others are simply born with a genetic mutation and decided to join the circus. There's some commentary thrown in on who the real freaks are, as even though Mulder and Scully are seen as normal, to this community they're the outsiders. They're the ones who don't fit in. Things take a really bizarre turn, when the killer turns out to be a malformed conjoined twin, and now the episode is in full-on B-movie territory. There are a lot of fun interactions between the characters. I especially love when Mulder offends Mr. Nutt when he assumes he's a performer simply because of his short height. But there are so many great moments in the episode that I could go on and on. But because of how much fun it is, I had to put this in my top 5. The Host may be in my top episodes of all time. Now I know there are episodes that are technically better, but the Fluke Man is just such a great monster that it's hard for me to put many episodes above it. Mulder is called to investigate a body found in the sewer after it washes up from a Russian freighter ship. After telling Scully he wants to leave the FBI, she does an autopsy on the body and finds a fluke worm, the first of many disgusting moments in the episode. Later a man is attacked in the sewer by the fluke man and eventually spits up one of its offspring in the shower. Fluke man is eventually caught up at a sewage processing plant where he's locked up like he's some kind of a criminal and not a radioactive monster. Everything culminates with the fluke man getting loose and Mulder having to try and stop it before it can escape and reproduce out in the open water. The fluke man is such a great concept and design and maybe my love for it stems from my love for the gill man. They're different sure but they have enough similarities. I think if you like old radioactive monster movies of the 1950s then this one should be right up your alley. Ascension is the second part of what is a three-parter and it's a really good one too. The bulk of the episode is basically a chase as Mulder attempts to find Scully who's been abducted by Dwayne Barry. Scully isn't really in the episode much as Jillian was preparing to give birth to her child at the time so this basically became how they were going to write her off the show for a bit. This episode is also where we learnt that Krychek really is a piece of shit as he does whatever he can to prevent Mulder from reaching Scully in time. You really do get a sense of just how devoted Mulder is to her though as he's willing to do just about anything to find her including climbing on top of a tramway which he easily could have fallen off of. Unfortunately Mulder doesn't make it in time and Scully is taken by something be it man or extraterrestrial. But this is really what is going to drive pretty much the remainder of the series so this episode is really important. You do kind of get a moment to cheer I guess you could say when Skinner reopens the X-Files which were closed at the end of season 1 but this was really the only thing that they could do to fight back against whoever or whatever took Scully. It ends on kind of a sad note when Mulder tries to return Scully's cross to her mother who in turn tells him to keep it so he can give it to her when he finds her. Ascension is a great episode and a really good middle to a three-parter. One Breath brings with it the return of Scully and the introduction of her sister. It wasn't very long before Scully returned as Jillian was only really gone for a single episode while she gave birth. Although returning in the short time that she did was rather difficult for her. Fortunately Scully spends the majority of her time in bed in a coma so she really didn't have much to do. With Scully's sudden reappearance Mulder goes on a mission to find just who took her and he's ready to use any kind of means to exact revenge. While Mulder searches for those responsible, Scully is visited by a nurse who may or may not be a guardian angel, attempting to tell Scully that it isn't quite her time yet. Through X, Mulder finds out the men who took Scully will be coming to his apartment that night and to be ready. But instead, Mulder listens to Scully's sister who asks him to come spend time with Scully during her final moments. Scully does eventually recover and the men that Mulder aimed to kill trash his place, stealing any evidence he may have had. But he chose to be by her side instead of shooting those responsible. One Breath is a really good episode with one of David's best performances to date. When he emotionally breaks down after his place has been ransacked and he feels hopeless because he feels like he failed Scully, it's truly heartbreaking. You really wanted to see Mulder take the men out that hurt Scully but deep down you know he wouldn't have been able to live with himself if he wasn't by her side if she had passed. One Breath is one of the best episodes of the season and one of the best episodes of the series. It's honestly hard to do a ranking when so many episodes are so good. The Dwayne Barry Ascension One Breath story arc might be my favorite arc of the series and it's honestly hard to say which one is better than the other. A big reason for my choice of Dwayne Barry being number one comes down to my experiences as a kid and how much this episode affected me. The flashback to Dwayne Barry's abductions are what nightmares are made of. I was honestly terrified beyond belief that I would wake up one day in a similar situation and the whole thing just shook me to my core. 
I remember even having sleep paralysis once after watching this as a kid and thinking I was being abducted. And no, I'm not kidding. You feel kind of bad for Dwayne Barry despite the fact that he's holding people hostage. He just wants to be heard. He just wants someone to listen to what he has to say and luckily for him, Mulder is that person. Scully becomes involved when Mulder too gets taken hostage, but once Dwayne is apprehended, implants are found on him exactly where he said they would be. Mulder gives one to Scully who has it analyzed and ends up finding a barcode on it. She scans it at the supermarket which gives off a weird serial number which she believes was used as a way to catalog Dwayne. This is where things get really tense as Dwayne breaks into Scully's place and abducts her, only for Mulder to hear the recording on his machine after the fact. This is one of the most impactful episodes of the series and the fact it's only the fifth episode and not a season finale says a lot. You're left on a really tense note which drives you to know just what will happen when the show picks up the following week. Any one of the abduction arc could be number one but I think because of personal memories I have to put Dwayne Berry first. And that is every season 2 episode ranked. These are always so difficult to do because I can never really make up my damn mind but I hope you at least enjoyed it. I'm curious, what are your favorite and least favorite episodes of season 2? I would love to know because you guys and gals always have much more interesting insight than I ever could. I really appreciate you watching and for all your support. I hope you're having a great day and please stay spooky.